Cedric, the entertainer, just stepped in. Just just walked into the studio. What's hey. up, Sid? Yeah. Let me get you. Uh, let me get you tightened yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in there. What up, Joe? Hey. Welcome to the show, man. Yeah, man. What Siri up, said he man? listens to us. Oh, what up, Joe? I mean, Cedric. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sid. Nervous, nigga. I'm nervous. <laughs> Sid, what up, man? Oh, yeah, God man. Damn. I listen to y'all, man. I dig, I dig y'all show, man. All the pill mixes and the drunk mixes and the, oh, and the people calling in of the truckers, man. It's all, y'all, y'all, y'all got a fun show, man. You a St. Louis cat. You must yeah. see, You probably grew up on, on a lot of the same stuff, huh? Y'all definitely, yeah. You know, I, we were talking about that, like that Midwest energy, you know, from you and from the D and Chicago and Cleveland and all of that, and Indianapolis, like all that feel, man. So uh, that was a part of my, you know, part of my brand coming up, man. Just like, you know, that's even the suits and the hats on stage mm-hmm. was real Midwest back in the day when I was coming up. That's how we did it. You got your own hat line, too. Yeah, right? yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. The Who Said. Who Said.com. So C E D, Who Said.com. You can go on, check it out. Grab some, grab some of them skimmers, oh. them lids. Oh, 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 oh quick question I want to ask yeah. you, man, real quick, my brother. Um, did you really bang them two bitches in that Chris Rock movie? <laughs> Is his wife, I think his kid is listening. Yo, son. yo, his son is right oh, oh. What's up, nigga? His son is right outside, bro. Hey, man, you know, it's, it's shit crazy. That's how, that's how you change the subject. That's how you change the subject when somebody put you in a situation. <laughs> shit wild as hell, man. Like, what's good, oh, though? Hey, shit. All right. I'm fine, my brother. Nah, man. No, we just, you know, oh. this, that was all theatrics, man. But it was fun, man. That, oh, that character wow. was so fun to do, man. Uh, Chris just let me get loose, man. So when he when he came up and told me what the Ooh. character was, it was like, look, I said, man, I can do this dude all day. <laughs> like we all, if you've been out on the road as a comic, we all know that promoter that swear he got it popping for yeah. you. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's him. <laughs> How, can you can you see through them cats pretty good now? No. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like now, what's the telltale you know, sign? Sir? Yeah, now, now I build it up to where you know I only really deal with like three or four promoters tops. Like I don't even do new people or nothing like that. But you know, you can kind of tell when people promise you too much. Dude, the other day just came like said, "Look, I can get you five hundred thousand for one day." <laughs> I, I said, "Bro, really? <laughs> you can give me five hundred thousand? That's that's what I do when it come to money. When it come to getting money, mm-hmm. trust me." That's what all I do. Then he hops in his Ford Tempo and drives <laughs> away, right? It's like totally <laughs> waiting on his on his XL Uber, like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, like my man, like he needed your app to all call him an Uber. Like, come on, bro, when you gonna get me five hundred thousand for one day? Like, where they do that at, man? Like, you gotta be, you gotta be uh, Beyonce them for that kind of money. Nobody give that money out. You still, you still do a lot of touring and stuff like that, yeah. Huh? Yeah, we out on tour now. We doing um we got this big tour um called a comedy get down tour. Me, George Lopez, DL Hewley, Eddie Griffin, Charlie Murphy. So uh we killing it. We actually gonna be at the forum on um we at the forum uh August twenty second in, in here in Los Angeles. And then this weekend we're coming up, we got Charleston on the fourteenth, Friday and uh, in uh, Charlotte, Saturday. So. What's that like traveling with comedians, man? It it must just man. be just jokes the whole fucking time, huh? Well, you know, I mean, guys, these guys are veterans, so you know, we not sitting around trying to top each other all the right. time. But it's definitely a good time, man. You know, because one, you got like a guy like Charlie Murphy, like just like the character was on the on a Ch- Chappelle show. He got a hundred stories, and when he started telling them stories, man, he be killing us. It's stuff that, that won't even be on stage ever, but it's just like funny. And then George, a great storyteller, you know, Eddie Griffin, a great storyteller. So, yeah. you know, we sit around, man, you know, and uh, most of the times, like, we'll fly in individually, like, to a date, and then we travel together to the in-between day. So, like, we'll fly separately into Charleston, and then we'll all be, like, on a tour bus to go over to Charlotte. So we'll be together having a good time, you know, and that's fun, man. You, the original kings of comedy, you were, you were, uh, you traveled with Bernie Mac. Yeah, he, man, legend. It, what, what was that like, man? Man, Bernie Mac, man, you know, he was one of these guys that, uh, and, you know, they just did a, a, you know, a special on him on TV One the other day. It was dope, but yeah. he was just like he was a true comedian, man. Like he loved comedy, he loved to be on that stage, 
And, you know, he would, like, come in. One of my great stories, I was telling him, like, on Kings of Comedy, I was, like, in Oakland, and you know, and I would go first. And so I was, like, you know, kind of like the youngest dude on the thing. I would go first, but I would rock, and then it would be an intermission. So then I had, like, all the celebs come back, like E-40 and all the basketball players. They'd be uh, coming to my room. Bernie came in my room and did a show for them. Like, he just walked <laughs> in my room and did, like, 15 <laughs> minutes of comedy, killing it. Everybody just like, oh, and he just walked out. Like, yo. But he would do stuff like that all the time, man, just kind of, like, just real cool. But he kept it to himself, man. Like, after the show, Ben Bernie would never – he wasn't no after-party dude. Like, he grown man. Like, he'd be back at the hotel. You want to meet him – Go to the bar at the hotel. You gonna be sitting there chilling. You seem like you seem like you're pretty chill too yourself. Right? Yeah, is that was that is that a key to success? Like not going too crazy. I you know I think so. I mean I think that you know as a as a stand up you know you definitely gotta be free to be whatever it is that you want to be. You know like but uh, you know I don't have no reason. You know I, and I I feel like I've been blessed to make it this far and still be doing it at a high level. Like to be out in this business and and still doing it at a top notch level. So I don't. I don't have no reason to have to prove anything to anybody like, you know, why I'm so over the top or need me, a, you know, I need something to be on YouTube or me throwing a bottle at somebody. I ain't necessary. Like, I keep it cool. You seem like one of the few comedians that's funny and not miserable at the same time. Yeah, mm. yeah that's interesting. Because that, that is, that's the thing, because people use the faces, right? Yeah. Uh, the comedy, they use the tragedy and the, you know, comedy and tragedy is that. But I'm, you know, yeah, I'm... I've always had a pretty centered kind of uh, personality, man. Even though you know I grew up in a single parent household, but my mom, it was a lot of love around, man. Like so, I never really felt like a person that just didn't, you know. I ain't have a, you know, all you know things growing up poor. We was all we was cool, like yeah. I had granimals. I had matching. <laughs> 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 like, was it was good. Cool. I was good, man. Like, you know, everything was cool. I can't remember it being that bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? So so I just try to take that spirit and put that out in the world, man. Know that it's a lot of joy out there, you know, with all this suffering. And I try to have fun with it and try to give you that point of view. And that's my brand. I don't, I don't worry about not being the hardest or whatever, you know? You got Cedric's Barber Battle, which I think yeah. is just a fucking awesome idea. It's, it, mm. it, it, it looks like you're, you're, uh, you're kind of stemming off from a lot of the hair shows but doing more battle uh barber type stuff yeah. fades uh lineups pictures and shit yeah shit talking yeah a bit exactly about that. yeah exactly you know it was one of those things that you know of course uh you know doing the barbershop movies i became really associated with that whole world like just kind of hanging out with the barbers a lot of cool a lot of my good friends barbers and uh, they naturally talk shit, man. Like this is this is a true competitive world. Any barber will tell you that the next barber messed your hair up. Like you can see the last barber. Yeah, last bar my, yeah they, I had they, to get a second haircut to fix my last haircut, man. Yeah, no barber, no <laughs> barber really likes what the other barber did. It'd be a very rare when a barber just give another barber like, okay, he could kill it. Yeah. So, so because usually it'd be like, yo, who did your lining? Who did this? So you know that was really uh, how the show kind of really came about. Is just knowing that that was really a competitive world, and uh, we wanted to be able to get it naturally, go into cool shops. Of course, we had to add the production value where you do some other stuff with it why you think and, barbers are so fucking hateful well, i mean you know it is a skill set and i mean it's one of those things that i think that when you look at you know when you when you watch somebody do their job and you and they supposedly finished yeah you looking at them like you really gonna let that man walk out of that chair like that you know so, so i think it's just natural like for people to think that they really can do it better than the next person what's the level of competition on there are you or are you booking motherfuckers that are good at shit talking or are you getting cats that are good at haircuts yeah. it's a little bit of both i mean yeah. that's the thing about it so we trying to like if you know we get this second season we can open it up a little bit more for people who just cut and don't have tv personality because right. this first year you get you definitely had to have like some personality to be on television because it's like you can't go in there and be boring so you know i think that but now we can come up with challenges that way where people can just see like your skill set you know but uh how many non-black people can cut black hair well well you know that that if they white 
it's like a couple of white dudes that was pretty good on the show. Yeah. But usually a lot of like Indian cats, they can cut black hair yeah. really good. Uh, Latin dudes, of course, you know, because they used to it in like in New York and stuff like that. You yeah, know, you like you can go there. Cut hair. And, uh, like. So, <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, but, but, you know, it's a couple of, it was a couple of, uh, we had this little Asian kid from like Montreal that was a beast. Like yeah. this dude was cold with it. Man, yeah. Was it like Japanese or some shit like that? Yeah, I don't know what the motherfuckers was. be studying and just doing <laughs> yeah, they, they study better. the culture though. Yeah. You know, like I said, because they love the music, they mm-hmm. love the clothes. So then, 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 you know, the whole haircut game is another part of it. It's such a part of hip hop culture. And that's the other thing we liked about it. It skewed really young, which was great for my brand. You know, it's like to introduce me to a new, new group of people by doing this show right here. How long you been doing this for now, Seth? Uh, close to thirty. I'm right God, at my. Damn, I'm, like, I'm right at thirty years. Man. Who'd you come up? Who'd you come up listening to? You watching like? Like my guy. Like you know, people that inspired me was, uh, of course, like uh, Eddie Murphy was the man yeah. right here in the Wayans brothers uh damon mainly wayne damon was the, was super the man at that time he did the, uh, he had the blood he had the bloods and the crips uh shit where he had the retarded people right yeah yeah guy. exactly yeah uh <laughs> the late robin harris you know baby kids that yeah. dude was my man he the one that inspired me the most because he was like the comedian that was like like the non-superstar that was a superstar like he didn't he didn't wear the leather stuff like ed and you know he wasn't super shiny <laughs> but he was like funny like everybody knew like he was like your uncle funny and that became like something i can identify with like oh you can do comedy like that then i can do it like you know when you come off really familiar like so many people think they know me already because of my style you know so i'll definitely have people stop me and start talking like they we've been friends forever i'll be like i don't really know you bro <laughs> 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 you're like, hey, hey, man. hey man man what the fuck <laughs> What the feet are doing? Like, like you, you blaze said, no, no, bro. I don't know you like that, man. I get the same shit, man. People hit me up. To, they want to oh, go. Yeah. Someone just hit me up to go for a walk. I'm like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go yeah, for a walk like, with you, man. Yeah. Like, it's cool. Nice meeting you. Yeah. You know, appreciate like, you. Yeah, but the fact that they listen to you every day, you know, that's the problem. Like, so, like, so you literally, you in their life, and you don't know. Like, I'm not in your. I'm, you're not in mine. Yeah. I'm in yours. So. <laughs> Um, yo, said real quick, would you do another Honeymooners? You know what, man? You know, the Honeymooners was one that just came up the other day because the idea was really dope. And it was, yeah. it was weird because it was uh, the, the concept, I'm saying, the, the movie changed a lot because the studio really wanted to go a different direction. But when we first started doing this movie, we first started doing it, it was me and Mike Epps, and we had a dope concept to do the episode when uh, Ralph found the money on the bus. And we was like, if we do the episode where Ralph found the money on the bus, we can make it urban and still not make it a super black thing, but it'll work for the comics that you got in it. And they came up with the dog and the, and the, you know, and all that, and it just kind of... It kind of changed, but I like that movie a lot, man. I, you know, people feel like that's a blemish on my career. Some folks be like, yeah, I don't know, but I like the movie a lot. I thought it was great. Well, there you go. So that, the answer is probably not, Sear. Long story short. But Sear, though, is where the money happened, though. It was <laughs> one know? of them Jones that they Hello. did pull out the, the pulled out the Brinks truck on I, that joint. Hello. Yo, I got... But yo, to that barbershop shit, I was real annoyed that I didn't even get to come in and read for the white dude shit. I was real fucking was so natural too, man. I, yeah, I was real annoyed at that. I was at Jenny Jones at the time, and I'm like, oh, I know I'm gonna get the call, and then the phone never but rang. That dude, Troy Garrity, man, that he was dude good, was so man. Bad. I wasn't even mad, but you know, I, but I was. You know, he had that other thing though. You know, that's Jane Fonda's son, so he. Oh, that's got, Jane Fonda. Oh, yeah, so Donnie, you some, lost. He had some, he had some legendary <laughs> stuff happening where the studio was like, we need all. That press. I don't know. Have you ever heard of Big Andrew? I'm Big Andrew's son. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you got the same voice. <laughs> well, big Angel- Vincent Angelini. Yeah. yeah. You got the same voice. Big Andrew's a big mug. No, this is no. Oh. I'm just talking about my dad. He's not oh, famous not at all. Oh. Yeah, he, he actually shines shoes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's all right, dude. That oh, works though. Yeah. Keeps, them, keeps some gators and them knobs clean. That's right, man. Yeah. You saw how many pairs of gators you got? It was one. Not no more, man. Was that was that like one of your first purchases when you were doing well? You grabbed oh, you yeah. some gators. What? 
what? You yeah. had to, man. I mean, like, that was that era, though. Like, you know, especially you, like, when I when it started getting hot for us, like, in them 90s, the Gator game, man, to go out and get the Maury Gators, mm. Detroit Ooh. players, man. But, you know, and then you come up and you get the, you know, you get the color ones. But they was like, what? What was Gators? Like, 1,200? There was a lot. It was like 1,200 a pair. Like, you had to be the man to just... By the time I got enough money to get some gators, they wasn't even yeah, banging like that. I still got. I, I went and bought them bitches anyway. I still got them motherfuckers. I still wear gators. Yeah, you gotta. Have, you get a good. You get a hot pair, man. You, you gotta rock them though. You know. what I'm saying? And a Dobbs hat, bro. I got. Yeah. Uh, that's you got your own hat line. Like, yeah. The, Where's it? Where are they being made at? Yeah, they made in St. Louis. Uh, oh, you that's know, fucking parties. awesome! Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a company, Hinchels. They've been around for years, like back in the '40s, and so we partner with them. Uh, they make our hats, and so um, we just now like starting to, you know, try to get them in, like in some stores. But I like the online. I kept it really small for a minute, like because it's just the way that you have to. Uh, you know, the bigger stores, they can order a bunch of them and then decide they don't want them and they just, you got to buy them back. You know, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm in the business of moving them and be done with it. So, you know, yeah. that's why we're doing it. We, but we've been killing for like three years, making making our, you know, making our margins, doing great. So, you know, now we're trying to, you know, uh, start to shape it up and take it to a bigger brand. Bro, I was afraid you were going to be like, yeah, China, when I asked where they was made, <laughs> no, man. Right. I was like, yeah. please don't say yeah, most China. Yeah, most did. No, 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 no. You know, I mean, uh, now, they might make them in China. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I go to St. Louis. They to come to St. Louis. Yeah. That's, That's all, all I know. I know. Yeah. Hey, no, uh, but they got the manufacturer. There, y'all, man. you guys, uh, you guys just came out. St. Louis is like top five most dangerous city. Oh uh, man, you know, is that something that you're proud about or just disappointed? When in? I was younger, that used yeah. to really be hip, like you know what I mean. But as a grown man, you know that's not hot, man. You know, uh, you know because one, you you got little nephews and cousins running around in there, and the fact is, is that it is a very violent city. Of course, the whole Mike Brown thing, and then it, you know, it, it jumped off again. You know, this Sunday after on the, you know, on the celebration of it or not the celebration or the recognition of it. And then it got, you know, it uh, it jumped back off, man. So, you know, it's like, you know, that violence, man, you just you need a city where people got like some hope and aspirations, you know. But St. Louis was always the town where the dope boys was king, man. That was just, you know, if you didn't if you didn't play sports. And and found a way out of there. That city was built on in in for the far as the black culture goes, it was all about being a dope boy. Like you know, so that's who owned the businesses. That's who ran the streets. That's who had all the chicks. You was know. you ever tempted to get in that? Did you get in that? For a little while, you know, for a little while, like in you know, like in the late eighties, it was just such a thing. I remember I was substitute uh, being a substitute school teacher, and the kids. There was I was teaching high school would show up they would have all these cars and leather jackets <laughs> they got the leather eight ball jackets on and I'm like I went to college got a college degree and I'm making one twenty a day yeah I think he's pulling out stacks of loot man so you know you try to give it a shot for a minute but it just wasn't me man you know I was so you was a substitute teacher selling dope no no oh. this was afterwards oh, like damn. like I just you know like afterwards I just kind of like. You know, like looked at their situation was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, I'm just figure out how to get some cash in my pocket. You know what I'm saying? That but, shit is frustrating as hell. But it's man. like, yeah, it's hard to see like young people. They, they under you. They was like really rich, and you. And again, you, you know, it's street rich, it's hood rich. You know, of course. But like when you got college loans and you just not understanding the American dream they sell you. You know, like I'm supposed to come out of college and have this big job. Nobody hiring. I'm substituting for 120 a day. Like that ain't making a lot of sense to me right now. Like, There's a 15 year old that can. That yeah, this 15 year old. With a brick of, <laughs> a brick he of like 20. pulling out. He like buying everybody lunch, including me. Like, yeah, what you need, Mr. Cedric? What's up? What's up, man? What's up, man? Go in there and get you something. Get you an extra juice. <laughs> Get you extra juice, Mr. Sale. You my man's. He's my favorite teacher, man. Get you some get you some chips, bro. Don't even worry about it. Thank you. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, O'Shawn. <laughs> It's embarrassing, is what it is. So uh, you know, it makes you grind happens, harder, man. though, man. Right, and you got to figure it out, man. You know, but you know, yeah, yeah, dip my little dip in there for a minute. It wasn't nothing. Well, C- Cedric, it, it's really a fucking uh, a pleasure to to chat uh-huh. with you, man. 
I, yeah, man, this saying here, I was quite surprised when you told me. I was like, yo, man, I'm, I listen to y'all all the time. That's crazy. Damn, man. Well, I, my daughter's going to be stoked that I got to meet you, man. She, Big up, man. She was like, you're not funny. I'm like, yeah, well, fucking who is? She was like, Cedric the Entertainer. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh, nice one. Don't nice you? She was like, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> shot. Fire, so, nice, man. When we get this shot, she's going to be fucking stoked. Yeah, that's going to be that's dope. I'm with that. My wife's going to be She gonna be excited, though. She's going to be like, what? That's not your wife out there? That's your, nah, that, that's my publicist and my little son. Oh, my son okay. out there, he on the computer. Is he into comedy as well or what? Yeah, he's funny, man. He's like, he's a really witty dude, man. But he's like, he's probably more into like, he's been like building, he's been like building superheroes today on his computer or something. So he kind of, you know, he's more in like to the tech world. But he's funny though. He's like really witty. Oh. So wait, he knows how to like do computer oh. programs oh, and all that shit? <laughs> oh, you say you can hear me. I didn't know it. What up, though? Yeah. yeah. What's up, That's man? Cool, man? Yeah. <laughs> Sir, ask that question again. Uh -huh. What? Uh, hey, all right. You know? oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's crazy, man. <laughs> My man. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, but so, uh, hey. yeah, man. I'm going to go on bounce, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to end with, uh, we're gonna end with the, one of your uh, clips where you're talking about the ratchet ass wheel of fortune. Cedric the Entertainer. No doubt. My man. You know, I got to talk about the gay thing. I'm living in LA now. I'm from St. Louis, but you know, he, he, Midwest just straight one way or the other, but LA just got it. You know, they be, whoo. A lot of fruity cocoa pebbles, man. And I ain't. People can do their thing far as I'm concerned, but you know, they be marching. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the hell on. We played the wrong clip, man. We played the wrong clip. We gonna play the right clip coming up now. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's my kind of logic. That makes sense to me. That's why I, that's why I wasn't mad when Ebonics was out. People was trying to be mad about Ebonics. Talking about we don't need our own language. Hey, hey, come on now. Hey, let Ebonics be a language. Then we can start whooping their ass at Scrabble. I mean, come on, we got words they can't pronounce, let alone spell. Libeler, I'm liable to bust your head if you don't get my damn points. If Ebonics is a language, then libeler is a word. Come on now. My baby daddy, that's one damn word. That's one damn word, come on now. Give my points, player, give them here. Put me on Wheel of Fortune now, put me on Wheel of Fortune now. We'll be on Wheel of Fortune asking for weird letter combinations. Let me get a L-E. The phrase is Lemme. Lemme $20 to the mall. I got you, Pat. I'm gonna give your little money back, Pat. It ain't like you ain't got it. 